Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Iris and I am happy to present you my first video of 2023, even though I filmed this art piece back in 2022. For this first video, let me take you back to your childhood with a simple reinterpretation of a fairy tale called Thumbelina. Thumbelina is a fairy tale written by Hans Christian Andersen, which tells the story of a tiny girl born in a flower who lives several adventures with marriage-minded toads, moles and cockchafers. She successfully escapes before falling in love with the flower fairy prince. I used pigment-based permanent ink and color pencils on hot press Arches watercolor paper for this creation. Now, on to the painting. This piece was created mostly with ink, which was a first as I usually use watercolor mostly. This time I did not use a drop of watercolor whatsoever. This had advantages and drawbacks. Uh, one main difference between watercolor and this ink in particular is that the ink I used is permanent. Once it is dry, you cannot lift it with water, it stays put. The drawback of this characteristic became a problem at the beginning of my painting process. If you follow my videos, you may know by now that I avoid using masking fluid on large areas as I've had problems in the past with damaged paper. So instead of using masking fluid, I used masking tape. Um, but um, no matter how many layers of masking tape I used, um, the ink sipped through. As you can see, there were several attempts that failed, uh, which was extremely upsetting um, because I used Arches paper and as you know, or you may not know, uh, it's very expensive. So finally, for the third attempt, I caved in and used masking fluid. However, I invested in schmink of masking fluid and the results were perfect. So after many paintings and many failed attempts, I came to the conclusion that results with masking fluid vary greatly depending on the brand used. Duh. <laughs> so this brand became my instant favorite. For the background, I first applied a layer of cyan blue and once it dried, I went on applying several layers of indigo, increasing the intensity, especially at the top of the painting. I used a wet-on-wet -wet technique to get a homogeneous background color. Once the background was dry and the masking fluid removed, I went on applying primary yellow in all the parts that were going to be hit by the glow coming from the inner flower. As this ink is permanent, I had fun with the layers. I knew that if I first applied the yellow, all subsequent layers above it would be tinted with yellow, which would reinforce the glowing effect. For the skin, I did a mix of several inks until I got a color that was resembling the desired skin tone. The color used in the first layer was very diluted, I only used it to get a base color. Then I applied a color which had a lot of violet in it to reinforce the coolness of the shadows. I applied another layer which had a lot of orange hue to warm up the skin, especially in the parts where the glow was supposed to be hitting the skin. Note that as I decided to have a warm light source, the highlights are warm. However, if I had chosen a cool tone light, then the highlights would have been cold as well.
To decide on the color palette of the overall painting, I did several tests prior on my iPad. I took a picture of my drawing and I did a very rough line art and coloring on Procreate, which helped me decide on the colors I was going to use. The color palette I chose on the flower was a gradient going from yellow-orange to turquoise, purple and finally pink. I don't think the flower I did is a variety that exists in real life. I got inspired by the lotus flower, obviously, uh, however I elongated the petals until I got shapes that I thought were more interesting. My first sketch had a very different flower design which I still like, uh, but I ended up changing it completely. For Thumbelina, I wanted to convey that she really was in her element. She comes from this flower. I decided to give her white hair because when painting white, it is important to use other colors than white. I thought the reflection of the colors emerging from the flower would stand out more on white than any other color. When applying the first layer of turquoise on the flower petals, I was a bit disappointed because as you can see it was quite patchy, so I had to add more layers to fix this issue. However, this first layer gave a good indication of where I wanted to have turquoise blue. To blend all the color transitions homogeneously, I had to apply many layers of ink and later on color pencils as well. I used quite a lot of indigo in this painting, of course, in the background, but also on the girl and the flower. This helped me increase the contrast by deepening the shadows and defining parts that lack definition. I love using indigo because when it's diluted, you can use it in a very nuanced manner, and if used in its full intensity, it looks almost black. For example, on the girl, I used a very diluted layer of indigo on the top of her head to show the cool shadows on a white object. And then I used the intense indigo for all occlusion shadows, which are supposed to be almost black. By the end of the process, I added little yellow specks all around Thumbelina to give a more magical type of feeling. You don't often see a girl big as a thumb coming out of a flower. Of course, I took a lot of liberties regarding this character. It's not like the fairy tale one. It's my Thumbelina. It's the image that came to my mind and I just wanted to share it with you.
Now, as you can see, I finished using ink and started finalizing adding details with color pencils. I mostly use Caron Dash, Luminance and Polychromos color pencils. For the skin tones, I like Caron Dash color pencils a lot better because Polychromos doesn't have as many nuanced skin tone colors. Polychromos is better, in my opinion, for vivid colors. If you watch my videos, you know I love to add pink at the end of my paintings. I think it's my go-to move. I never realized that before having a YouTube channel, but now, every time I am editing my videos, I notice that I do this every single time. It's not even my favorite color, but I guess when I paint, my eyes demand more pink and my hands strongly agree. I finished the painting adding more indigo to make things a little bit deeper and more defined. I also added some gold specks along with the yellow ones, which I have not filmed, but trust me, it's in the painting. Besides a frustrating beginning, uh, this painting was quite straightforward and fun to make. It didn't take me that long to create and the result is quite nice. I love that the colors are quite vibrant. I hope you enjoyed watching this being made. If you did, let me know what you think in the comments below and do not forget to like this video. Have you subscribed to the channel yet? Make sure to hit the subscribe button below and never miss out on a video. With all that being said, I'll see you in the next video. A huge thank you for watching. Bye.